every other dis-ease of the body gets accelerated as we age because our bodies are not able to maintain equilibrium or homeostasis as well as it did when we were younger because we do not have the same level of vital reserves or we have talked too many toxicities as well as, which we're gonna talk about today, heavy metals. Welcome back everyone. We're here today with a brand new Cabral concept. Today is episode 2658. If you wanna head on over for all the show notes, you are welcome to. I'm definitely gonna link up the research there today and you're going to wanna check it out because there's a lot of people out there Believe it or not, a lot of them are medical doctors as well that simply weren't trained in this, that don't understand how heavy metals affect learning disabilities in children and adults, Alzheimer's as we start to age, as well as, and this is important, the overall aging of our body. So as we start to look at, you know, diseases of old age, and yes, I'm putting that in air quotes, a lot of people believe that aging is itself a disease. What we have to understand is that Aging itself is not a disease. What happens is every other dis-ease of the body gets accelerated as we age because our bodies are not able to maintain equilibrium or homeostasis as well as it did when we were younger because we do not have the same level of vital reserves, whether it's enzymes, amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, proteins, et cetera, et cetera, right, hormones. Um, or we have talked too many toxicities. And those might be yeast overgrowth, mold overgrowth, like we spoke about yesterday on the show, mold exposure, exposure to plastics, uh, so many more, right? Other types of pathogens, viruses, et cetera, as well as, which we're gonna talk about today, heavy metals, right? So we have to understand is that there is not a point in our life. Conventional medicine likes us to tell us previously, oh, you get to 40 years old, everything's downhill from there. Now they're saying, okay, you get to 50 years old, everything's downhill from there. So yeah, I mean, again, with conventional medicine, maybe every like 25 to 30 years, maybe they push it back another five years or so, right? And every 50 years, maybe that seems about right. We might get another 10 years, but that's not good enough for me. It's, it's really not. And I hope it's not for you either because when we look at it, you know, people start, just getting put on medications by the time they're in their 30s at the latest. Now, when you look at the medication stats with children, I'm going to probably do a whole episode on that. It's deplorable. Like, we have to do better. And it's not the parent's fault. I, I really don't believe that because there's just no education from conventional medicine. And I'm not blaming medical doctors. I'm not blaming their pediatrician because they're not taught it in medical school. So if you're not taught it, and the average physician basically stops learning anything after they get out of medical school. I mean, and again, not to be um, dismissive, but they just don't, like they don't. Like how, ask a medical doctor that's not in the functional medicine or integrative health field, you know, like how many health books have you read in the last year? And, you know, if you are a medical doctor and you're like, well, you know, I read a book a month, then ph phenomenal, right? Like that's totally a different story and that's not the same category. What I'm saying is that we need to be better for our patients, for our wellness clients. It's not about us. It doesn't matter how many books you've read. You don't need to put it out there. What I want to share with people is that you do it for the people that you're supposed to be serving, what's best for them. You have to keep up. Anyway, what I would love is for heavy metals to be brought more into the forefront. I'm just gonna share with you a few, this is a large study, but I'm gonna share with you, it's definitive proof of how heavy metals begin to affect the body and brain at a young age, but also as, a, as we get older. Keep in mind, Alzheimer's doesn't show up overnight. A lot of times we like to think, oh, you know, I got Alzheimer's. The person's, you know, 67 years old, early on had Alzheimer's, or it's 78 years old, or whatever it might be. It, it happens decades before, and it's a slow deterioration, not typically quick. Now, there can be heavy metal toxicity where, you know, you get exposed to a large amount of heavy metals. There's no doubt about that. But for most people, it is the filling up of the rain barrel. The rain barrel effect, it overflows, and now you have Alzheimer's when you're 74 years old, 78 years old, whatever it might be. But it doesn't have to be that way. And the nice thing is, all the studies show as well that even Alzheimer's can be reversed. I, I get, did a whole podcast on it. I have a whole series on Alzheimer's. And it talks about this. It talks about you can empty your rain barrel just like you filled it up. 
And there was only one case in this particular study that was not reversible with Alzheimer's. The person had terminal Alzheimer's, that their brain was literally too far gone. But for the most people, nine out of 10, it's reversible. And so again, keep that hope. Keep that hope for all of these issues, heart disease, high blood pressure, type two diabetes, Alzheimer's, they can be reversed. And again, if your doctor says they can't be and that you need to be on a life of medication, just get a second and third opinion. I'll be doing more research and giving you more research on that. You'll often find that second, third, fourth, and fifth opinions are different than the first. And that's why you want to get multiple opinions. And to me, it doesn't matter if you don't trust the natural health field. I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to share with people an unbiased perspective. And you could just go to five different medical doctors if you want. Like if you feel more comfortable going to a licensed medical doctor, then I have no problem with that. Just come with the information, just say you're looking for another opinion and and move forward that way. Because you shouldn't have to be on medications for all these chronic-based health issues, which always have an underlying root cause. Unless unless it's an acute-based condition, there's really no need. There honestly is no need. Now, if you let it go too far in the short term, sure, you need to be. You might need to be on a medication. That's the truth, right? Because you don't want to die. Like if you can go so far as to now your life is at risk. Okay, well, you might be taking the medication while at the same time then working on the underlying root causes. And then you might begin to taper off the medication with your physician. And then after that, you're just going back to living a healthy life and you're medication free because you fix the underlying root cause, right? And so, again, if I was able to do that in my early 20s and mid 20s, uh, there's no doubt you can do it as well. There's just there's just no doubt about it, right? All right, let's get into it. So, uh, what are heavy metals? I guess that's a good place to start. We've lots of podcasts on this, but heavy metals are things like mercury. So, mercury could be, you could get that from water, you could get it from fish, large fish like swordfish and tuna, That's an easy way to get it. That's how I got it when I was younger, for sure. You can get it from mercury amalgams in your mouth. You can get it from certain shots um, that are stabilized or exacerbated with heavy metals. Um, So there's lots of ways to get uh, heavy metals like mercury into your body. Uh, Other things, let's go with another one like lead, right? So lead paint, housework, and even water-based contamination. Arsenic, really common in rice-based products. It can be from groundwater, easy way to get arsenic. Um, certainly affects, we'll talk about it you know, on today's show, but different glands and parts of the body as well. All right, so let's dive into the show. You know a little bit about heavy metals. It comes from the environment. It can come from uh, the water. It can come from neurotoxins um, that are put into our body, like those silver fillings and much more. So Um, This is going to be linked up, again, the full study of how it affects our nervous system and brain at stephencabral.com forward slash 2658. And the study is from PubMed, which is typically where I pull studies from. And we're going to get right into it. So uh, let's talk about this. Heavy metals in the brain first. The reason why they begin to harm the brain is what they call it as subtle. This is direct quote from the study, subtle alterations in in synaptic transmission due to the interaction of metals and the profound toxic effects on the central nervous system. Okay, what does all that mean? It means that your body, think of your brain and the spinal column attached to it or the spinal cord running inside of the spinal column. All off of that spinal column innervates all little nerves. And those nerves send signals to all of the organs of your body, glands, your fingers, your muscles, all of the motor skills of the body as well. So we have a part of the body that works automatically without us having to think about it. You don't think about your heart beating. You don't have to think about it beating faster or slower. It's going to do it automatically, right? And then there are some functions that we do think about and me making a fist right now, right? So that's me thinking about it. So we have two different ways that the nervous system works. One automatically, the other is actual manual mode, right? So two different ways to look at it. So we've got the subconscious, the conscious uh, innervation of the central nervous system. And the central nervous system is, again, the nerves that come off of that spinal uh, cord that tell the body what to do. Okay, well, the brain starts essentially those signals, but it also gets a feedback loop from the body itself. That means that when heavy metals are in the body, they can create what's called free radical damage, which is essentially oxidative stress. 
That means that inflammation is created wherever these heavy metals interact with certain parts of the body. So if a heavy metal interacts with your thyroid, it creates inflammation. Over time, it may lead to low thyroid production. It may lead to Hashimoto's, an autoimmune issue. If heavy metals end up in the joints, it could lead to inflammation there and may end up leading to rheumatoid arthritis. If heavy metals link into the nervous system itself and the myelin sheath, it may lead to um, multiple sclerosis, right? So like that's how it happens. Inflammation, it's only one factor, right? There's also intestinal permeability-based issues, there's bacterial issues, et cetera. But these are, this is how inflammation is then created. Okay, when heavy metals move past what is called the blood-brain barrier, they can actually get into the brain tissue or the nervous system of the brain, which we will call the synapses or synaptic clefts as well. So basically, that's in between synapses, and there could be inflammation of the synapse itself. Uh, basically, that looks almost like a little octopus. So it has these tentacles that innervates and sends out information, electricity, to the next axiom or the next nerve over here, the next synapse, and what it's going to do is take that signal and just fire them all to the proper parts of the brain and then back, and it happens lightning quick. Well, if there's inflammation in those areas, it can begin to break down those synapses as well. When the synapses are broken, we get we get imbalanced in terms of our body, right, for the messages to our body, but also we start to lose thoughts. We start to lose the ability to create new memories, the ability to recall previous memories. So this is really important. So I just wanted to set the stage with a little information first. Hopefully that was helpful. I'm happy to do additional shows on all of this as well. And I have a bunch of shows already in Alzheimer's. And so we can link those up today as well. All right, so let's get into it. The first major heavy metal that the study talks about is aluminum. Aluminum is found in, uh, the aluminum is present in high concentrations in brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease, and dial, dialysis, you can't speak today, I apologize, and could contribute to neurogenerative disorders. In animals, the administration of aluminum salts results in neurofibrillary degeneration, a condition similar to encephalopathy in Alzheimer's disease. Okay, what does all of this mean? It means that before, a lot of it was guesswork, like we think heavy metals can affect Alzheimer's, but now, autopsy is done. They have found the presence of aluminum in many Alzheimer's-based patients. Not good, right? So what do we want less of? Aluminum. I'm going to link up a podcast here today just on sources of aluminum, okay? So really important that we look at that because you want to make sure that you are starting to remove all the sources of aluminum in your environment. All right, the next one is arsenic. So this is one of the oldest known poisons, it says. And um, the acute ingestion of arsenic affects many systems of the body, including gastrointestinal discomfort, cardiovascular, respiratory, nervous system. Even low-dose exposure to arsenic is very common in countries right now like Bangladesh, India, Taiwan, and other parts of Southeast Asia due to contamination by groundwater of groundwater by arsenic. Uh, it's a major cause of infant mortality in Bangladesh. Chronic manifestations of arsenic poisoning are pigmentation changes, GI problems, anemia, liver disease, blackfoot disease, and mise lines on the nails. Central neuropathy due to arsenic poisoning usually manifests as impairment of learning, short-term memory, and concentration. However, peripheral neuro neuropathy is more frequently observed, and this might last for several years. It manifests as a rapid and severe ascending weakness, and sometimes these patients require mechanical ventilation. Okay, so we know now what high-level arsenic poisoning is, but low-level ends up with GI issues, pallor of the skin or anemia, weakness, brain fog, liver disease, right? These are all specific issues that can be associated with arsenic. The next one is cadmium and manganese. Both have neurotoxic effects or can have neurotoxic effects. You actually need some manganese. It's a very important trace mineral. Uh, but cadmium can absolutely damage the, uh, the 
cerebral cortexes of young, this was done actually in young rats, and the symptoms ended up as something like Parkinson's disease. Really important because it can also affect uh, learning disabilities as well as visual motor abilities. Really important to look at that one. And again, that's more of a groundwater, well water contamination too in soil. Lead, this is the final one I'm going to, actually I'm gonna go through mercury as well. Uh, so lead, neurotoxicity has been extensively studied, discovered more than 5,000 years ago. It has been used, still used for lead water piping, uh, used to be used sometimes for utensils to sweeten food and wine and a constituent to this day of some cosmetics, believe it or not, and, and um, uh, like eyeshadows, et cetera, and even lipsticks. Uh, it was discovered that this acute uh, exposure could lead to mental disturbances and chronic exposure to even low dosage, especially in children, cause cognitive and behavioral disturbances. All right, uh, mercury can, high levels of mercury, which we explained a little bit earlier, can lead to vision loss, hearing loss, speech issues, gait issues, and ultimately death. Also been shown with cognitive impairment in prenatal issues as well. All right, so this is really important. I just gave you a brief summary, but what we wanna understand is that these metals are always present in the environment. Our job is just to make sure that we are not being exposed to high levels of them. We're being exposed to small levels here and there, but if your liver's strong, meaning like it can detoxify well, your kidneys are doing well, you sweat on a regular basis to sweat out a lot of these too, and especially just you know exercise. So you get your four main detox pathways right there, right? So you've got your skin for sweat, you've got your lungs to huff it out, you've got your liver to remove it through bile, and you've got your kidneys to remove it through urine. And so when we look at that, okay, great, our body's doing its job. We typically recommend at once, maybe twice a year, heavy metal detox. That can be really, really effective as well. And then again, if you're worried, there's multiple ways to test for heavy metals. You can even just do the simplest way, which is the uh, minerals and metals test to look at a hair analysis of every single one of these that I just mentioned. So that's important to look at that. But you can do a blood-based one too. And so whatever works for you, I definitely recommend you start to look at that. You start to move forward in whatever direction you feel is comfortable for you. I will link up the heavy metal lab tests. And then what we're gonna do is link up all of the free additional podcasts talking about sources of mercury, talking about Alzheimer's, uh, and a few of these other issues as well. So hopefully today's show was helpful. I appreciate your listens, your downloads, your subscribes. Thank you so much. Of course, share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics that you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.